I realize if you're a freelancer and you don't have work experience in your field, it's going to be harder for you to find your first jobs on Upwork. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to get started on Upwork. If you have no work experience, how to find your first jobs, how to get started successfully. In my first year as a freelancer, I've worked on about a dozen projects where people were willing to pay uh, over $65 an hour for my time. I know how to get started as a freelancer and in this video I'm going to share with you some great tips that allowed me to get started successfully as a freelancer and can allow you to get started uh, way quicker and easier as well. So the first thing you need to understand is understanding how people on Upwork, how the clients make their decision of which freelancer they decide to work with, right? You understand what they're looking for. You understand what they're looking at. You understand what you need to optimize to be able to be chosen by these people who make the decision of who gets jobs and who doesn't get jobs. I really understood the way that clients on Upwork uh, experience Upwork and experience having uh, to choose between freelancers when one day, as a freelance developer, I had to work on a project that I did not have all the skills that I needed to be able to complete a project for my client, and I needed to find someone who had some coding skills that I did not have, and so I tried to go on Upwork as a client. I made my job offer, and the first thing that really surprised me is that within 48 hours, we had already like 92 messages or 94 messages or about that range of messages. I was absolutely shocked, first of all, by the sheer amount of people who were offering their services to us. I was also very shocked about how little money people were willing to work and do this job for. I received offers from people who were willing to do this job for less than like $6 an hour. And this was work that if I had to find people in my country who would be doing it, it would be like $20 an hour. If I was lucky, like those would be the cheapest I would be able to find, right? So what happened for us is, you know, I didn't have time to look at all their proposals, all their messages, all their profiles, 92 people. So what my partner and I did is we just looked at very quickly, all their profiles, we tried to find which of these people looked the most professional and which of these people charged the lowest amount of money while still looking, you know, professional enough. And we basically filtered out everybody else. You know, we didn't have time to read all their bio and do all these things. So most of our decision on who seemed worth paying for were based on, first of all, the hourly rate that they were asking for. And second of all, what we could see on their profile picture and on their portfolio, because when you're just skimming through, you don't read the text. You have, I mean, a lot of Upwork uh, job offers, you, you just look at the number of proposals they have. It becomes absolutely insane. You know, they get over a hundred proposals sometimes. And if you're competing with that amount of people, you can't expect people are going to read your bio, read all that description and all that sort of thing. The point where they start reading your bio, I believe, is when they filter you out as one of the worthwhile candidates. You know, uh, what we did is when we figured out who are the people that looked professional, after that we started reading these bios, but we didn't read the bios of the people before. We made our first uh, filtering decision based on what we could see on the visuals. If you're doing something visual like websites, uh, you need to have websites that look good on your portfolio. If you don't, you, you're probably going to have to send a very high amount of proposals, apply to a very, very high amount of jobs, because you're probably going to get filtered out most of the time. And you're probably going to have to offer less money than more people because that's another way you can stand out. Unfortunately, that's not a way to sustain a very profitable or, you know, sustainable long-term career. So if you really are serious about Upwork, you should consider paying a photographer to get a good profile picture. One of your, one of your problems that you're going to have early on is it's going to be difficult for you to charge a, a high hourly rate because your profile has a 0%, you know, job successful rate, right? You haven't completed any job yet. 
So you need to find people who are willing to give you a chance despite the fact that you have not proven to Upwork that you're a real person that does good jobs. So you're probably going to have to lower your hourly rate to compensate for that. And once you start getting maybe four or five jobs done, you can maybe raise your uh, hourly rate a little bit. When it comes to your profile though, if you don't have a lot of school education and you have nothing to put on your profile... It's going to be a little more difficult for you to find jobs. If you don't have a portfolio at all, it's going to be a little more difficult for you to find jobs. And yes, you know, you, you can build your portfolio through working on Upwork, but it's just going to make it harder for you to find your first jobs and harder for you to get started, take more time, have to send more proposals to get started and start finding more success on the platform than if you did have these things. So if that's your case, if you don't have like school education in that field and you don't have like projects you can show in your portfolio, I would consider actually using a different method for finding your first freelance jobs. You can find freelance jobs with other methods that are not dependent on a profile, on these sorts of credentials. You can use methods where people don't really ask you to see these sort of things. And I believe the best way to get started is to use something like mechanical outreach. If you don't know what that is, you want to know what that method of finding freelance jobs is, how it works. I made a short tutorial of three videos where I share with you how I find uh, clients with mechanical outreach. I totally stopped using Upwork a couple of years ago. Uh, I found mechanical outreach and I, I found that it's really a lot more effective. So I, I, I've been using this ever since. If you're interested, uh, go check out the description. I'm going to share with you a link to that uh, playlist. But if you do have college education or uh, good formal education, you typically should have made a lot of projects through your education and you should typically be able to use some of these things that look the best uh, if you're doing something visual like websites and put them on your portfolio and have at least something that you can show that helps you stand out from all these other freelancers that don't have anything to show on their profile. And when it comes to how much you should ask for in an hourly rate, you probably expected you'd probably make a little more than what you would charge in a normal job as a freelancer. But Upwork, the problem is there's a lot of competition, especially at uh, the beginner level. At the intermediate level, it's better, but at the beginner level, it's incredibly competitive. And because you're competing with a lot of people from uh, emerging countries who are willing to do the same work you do for like $6 an hour, maybe less, um, you're not, probably not going to be able to charge the amount of money that you wish you would be able to charge and be able to find a job. If you're trying to find jobs at maybe like $15, $20 an hour, um, you're, you're going to have to send a ton of proposals. You're probably going to have to pay a lot of money for Connects, which is the currency that allows you to send more proposals because on Upwork, you can only apply to a few jobs for free. If you want to apply to more jobs and if you want to make a lot of money on Upwork and actually make hourly rates, rates that are significantly higher than minimum wage in the US or Canada, uh, you're going to have to send a lot more proposals than what you're allowed to send for free. If you want to sustain like a, a good long-term career and keep finding jobs months after months, um, you're going to have to pay for connects. So you're going to have to understand that you need to pay to be able to find jobs. You have to be willing to pay to do that. If you only want to use the free option, and you're not willing to work for like probably $10 an hour or less, it's going to be difficult for you to get started, even if you have a portfolio. So, um, But Upwork's amazing because it allows you to find typically a lot of uh, work, a lot of businesses that you wouldn't be able to find elsewhere. It allows you to find a lot of cool projects that you wouldn't be able to find elsewhere. It also allows you to find uh, jobs without having to learn much about any other marketing skills, which is amazing. Uh, and it's a great place to get started, build a portfolio, build some experience. And if you love what you do and you really don't care how much you get paid for it, I mean, you could have a lot of fun on Upwork. It could be a perfect match for you. But if you try it and you figure out that you are not getting the sort of results that you want, or maybe you haven't tried it and you feel that you would like to make more than minimum wage doing uh, the skill that you probably spent months learning that you feel would be worth more than minimum wage, you should consider trying another method of freelancing. Um, some of the most effective methods that we found at finding jobs are, again, uh, you can use mechanical outreach. Uh, my tutorial is still in the description. 
And the other method that we found that's incredibly effective, though difficult emotionally, is cold calling. We've had incredibly good results with both these methods. Uh, email works uh, pretty well as well. As well, Cold email works pretty well as well. Um, <clears throat> but I would avoid all these freelance platforms, all Upworks, Fivers, and alternatives, uh, unless you're willing to work for uh, $10 an hour or less. Um, it's going to be very difficult to get started and it's going to be, be hard to find jobs because of all the competition, especially uh, against people from uh, emerging countries who are willing to work for way less than you are uh, when it comes to hourly rates. But if you want to be successful in Upwork, you can probably do it. Hire a photographer, get a good pro profile picture, buy Connect. Don't be, don't be afraid to pay money to be able to apply to a high amount of jobs and send probably proposals to at least 50 to 100 jobs. Upwork is not, you know, the best way of finding jobs as a freelancer, in my opinion. Um, but for a lot of people, it can be an amazing platform. And again, there's a lot of amazing projects, uh, although they don't necessarily pay that well. Uh, there's cool projects that you can find on Upwork. And if you just do what you do because you love what you do and you want that freedom, I mean, Upwork might be the best platform for you.